<clears throat> Hello. What I thought I'd do in this tutorial is demonstrate how to create a unique legendary weapon. I know I've had a few uh, requests of this. Now, you'd think, well, you'd hope it would be as simple as just, you know, creating a weapon. But it's not It's not at all like that. It involves some, uh, you know, making a quest, adding some scripts, adding some uh, form lists, some leveled item lists. There's a lot of stuff to do. So the first thing we're going to want to do is consider what kind of weapon do we want. Now maybe you've made one in advance that you want, but I'm just going to use a generic 10mm pistol. So first thing I'm going to do is create a leveled item list. Which should be around in, here we are, leveled item. So I'm going to right click new. And I'm going to do the abs absolute bare minimum uh, for this. Like you could, if you wanted to really like go deep, you could add extra leveled lists so that when the player's at a certain level, you add certain ones with certain mods, but I'm just going to do one like basic leveled list. I'm just going to call it Tutorial Legendary List. And I'm going to right click New and 10mm is the very first one that comes up, it's the very first alphabetically, so that's why I'm going to use a 10mm. And what, then what we're going to do is we're going to go Override Name. And in this Override Name, this is where the name of the weapon but will come up when the player picks it up. So I'm just going to call it Seddon's Gun, like that. So when the player picks up this weapon, it will be called Seddon's Gun. So hit OK there. I guess same as tutorial. Then I'm going to create a form list, and those are, I think they're lower down. I'm just going to hit F until I find it. There we go, form list. So I'm just going to right click new and I'm just going to call it tutorial legendary form list and now this is where any modifications we want to attach to the weapon are going to be put in so we're going to have to leave that open while we search for the object mod section there it is and here we'll see a whole list of any mods that can be put in you can see here uh, mod so it'll be called like if you want any specific mods we just look for the mod underscore then the particular type of weapon that we want. But in mine, I'm just going to do a legendary one. So I'm just going to look for mod underscore legendary. And here we go. This will bring all them, up, them all up. So you see, because we're making a weapon, we'll look for any of the mods underscore legendary ones. So let's do explosive bullets. We just click and drag that into the form list and it'll look like this. And I'm not going to add any of the basic ones. I'm just going to add that. And so I'm going to hit OK. So now what we're going to do is we're going to need to create a quest for the uh, legendary weapon. Now the base game has its own quest for where it does this. But I think it would probably be better if we didn't uh, edit any base game things, if we created our own things. So I'm just going to right click new. And so I'm going to create ID tutorial legendary quest. And I'm not going to put it, going to have it as priority zero, just leave it as it is. So I'm just going to put legendary and we can see our legendary quest here. So now I'm going to create a stage and I'm going to right click new and I'm going to do stage 10. Right click new in here and I'm going to leave it blank but I'm going to press run on start. And that's going to be used later on. What this means is as soon as this quest starts and it starts right away because it's start game enabled. Then stage 10 will automatically be set. So now what I'm going to do is go to scripts. Now we could uh, create our own script and but there's kind of no point doing that. We may as well just add the script that the game uses. And again, we'll be alright to uh, to do this. It won't interfere with the base game because it's within its own quest. Okay, it's finally loaded up. And we're going to look for custom item script. Here we go. Custom item quest script, it's called. And we'll see here it's already got a property called item data. And now, if we look at the source, this is what it looks like. And it's... A little bit complicated and I, I don't really get a lot of it but basically what it's doing here is it's creating these structs things which uh struct and end struct which allows a i think it i get the impression it allows a property to have its own properties and all these this, this is why i thought we better not write one we better just use the base game one because it's a little bit complicated so if we go back into the properties section and we'll see there's nothing here but if we double click it this will now appear and we're going to add and now this whole list of properties comes up. And so these are the properties that belong to with it. And we can have as many of these as we like. But because I've only got one weapon, I'm just going to go ID. Now this doesn't do anything at all. This is just to, if we were going to have multiple 
legendary weapons added, we would add this in here to uh, prompt us which legendary weapon was being added. So I'm just gonna, but I'm just gonna put it anyway. Uh, I'll call it tutorial. 10 millimeter. Like that's not really used for anything. And now this is this is the point of the stage we created earlier. It will spawn the item when this stage is set, and because stage 10 is set automatically, uh, this weapon will automatically be created. Now leveled list to spawn from. Double click, and we're gonna look for the leveled item list that we made before, not the form list, the leveled item list. So I called it tutorial legendary list. And now mods form list. This is the form list that we made. Tutorial legendary. Oh, hold on, I saw it for a second. Then form list. And now we're gonna. These are where we're gonna spawn it. Reference to spawn in. Alias to spawn in. Place at me instead, or force item into. And now at the moment we don't have anywhere really in mind, but we want to spawn it. So I'm going to set that up now. This is why I've already got the Abernathy farm cell loaded up. So we can do whatever we like in, in terms of this. I'm going to find a container, a suitable container, and place it in the world and use that as my, uh, as my container. So basically it's preferably something, something generic so that I'm not interfering with anything specific. Um, this has got a suitably high count that I can I've decided if that's nice and generic. So we'll use this Federalist desk as our reference. And we we are going to spawn inside the desk. Now it's the same if you want to spawn in an NPC's inventory, you do the same thing but place an NPC in the game instead of uh, uh, an, an object instead of an object. And I'm gonna just find the quest again. Legendary item quest. Double click back inside here. Oh wait, I've gone into the wrong thing. I've got a you know, tutorial legendary quest. That's the, one of the base game quests. And go back in and double click our tutorial 10mm. And reference to spawn in. Because we're using a reference, we're going to want to use reference to spawn in. We could use a quest alias. But we're get or we could use um like a place at me instead thing if we wanted to put it in world. We're not gonna do that, we're gonna double click here. And there you go, Federalist pre war desk. And if I click off it, that's showing up now, Federalist pre war desk. So that's actually that's actually all there is to it really. Um when I go into the game now, it will be showing up inside this Federalist desk. Actually, what I thought I'd do before I went into the game was demonstrate how to place it actually in the world rather than in an object as well. So I'm just going to look for the X marker object. And I'm going to get this to the front. And I'm just going to click and drag my X marker into the... Oh, you can't see it. Has it gone up? Yeah, it's gone under the desk. Just click and drag it so it's just a, sort of floating above the desk like this. And depending on what angle we put this at will depend on what angle the gun is placed. But it's kind of difficult to tell until we get into the game what that's going to look like. But uh, So I'm now going to travel over to quest data and I'm quickly just going to check allow repeated stages. Now the only reason I'm doing this is if we wanted to add loads and loads of um, of guns, we might want to add them in, you know, in a random order. And so if we allow repeated stages, it will allow us to later go back and set up another stage. But uh, if you get what I mean. So I'm just going to create a new stage, stage 20. And in stage 10, I'm just going to put set stage 20 like that. So now when stage 10 is set, it will automatically say set stage 20 and move us on. And I'm just going to put a little log entry in there so it works. And I'm going to travel over to our script and double click. And now go back in here and I'm going to click add. And I'm going to do everything exactly the same. I'm going to put the, uh, just use the same gun for the purpose of this demonstration. So it's got tutorial 10 millimeter. And all, and this, now we're going to want this to be stage 20 because it's a different gun we're spawning in. Leveled list to spawn from, I'm going to use the same weapon, so tutorial legendary list. And mods form list will be tutorial legendary form list. And now we're going to go reference to spawn in, double click. And we're going to pick reference and vendor window and click the X marker. Yeah, there we go. Our happy farm, X marker ref. But we're going to go over to this bool, this place at me instead. And we're going to double click and we're going to check this checkbox place at me instead. And what that means is that it will spawn at the X marker instead of 
um, in, instead of spawning sort of inside, because it obviously it can't spawn inside because it's an X marker, so we have to check uh, to spawn at that location. So when we get into the game, because of the way I've set it up, there'll be a gun on the desk, and the exact identical gun will be inside the desk as well. So I'm just going to go into the game and demonstrate that. Okay, so I'm here at Abernathy Farm, and let's have a look at our things. Ah, great. I mustn't have uh, put it high enough up because uh, the gun was kind of floating, but here's Seddon's gun. Bingo. Bullets explode on impact, doing 15 points of area damage, and we can see Seddon's gun is also inside the desk. Bullets explode. Ooh, it's got mods on it this time. That was unexpected. And so now let's have a little look at them both. Seddon's gun with all mods, Seddon's gun without all mods. Let's use the mods one. And we should see it exploding when I shoot. Oh, nice. A very nice automatic. Uh, I guess sometimes it must uh, randomise what mods you get, because uh, this version doesn't appear to have any mods at all. Oh, this one's automatic. Yeah, it must randomise what mods you get, unless we unless we specify in the uh, form list. It must randomise what mods we get. So that is how you create your own legendary weapons. And obviously we can do as many of those as we want. Um, in, in stage 10, we just then can set all the other stages if we want, so that it will uh, spawn all the legendary weapons that we, need, that we want for our mod. So yeah, hopefully that was useful, hopefully uh, useful and clear and you've understood uh, what needs to be done to create your own legendary weapons. So thank you for watching and goodbye.